This video was requested by Flame Got That Game, Eclipse, Ethan Bryant, Larry the Duck, Frosty Alpha, Gigi's Flower Pot, and Newbie Craft. Hello and welcome back to Quirk Analysis 101, the series where I give you a detailed rundown on the quirks in the world of My Hero Academia. In the last video, I discussed the ability that belongs to the questionable father. My old man is a scumbag. But not so questionable new number one hero. <laughs> Endeavor, and his super hot quirk, Hellflame. Do you think he named his power that himself, or did someone just happen to say, wow, that guy's fire is hot as hell, and then... In today's video, I'll be discussing the quirk that belongs to the often forgotten but always beloved winner of the Miss Con Beauty Pageant and the unfortunate centerpiece of a hell of a lot of Rule 34, Nejure Haro of UA's Big Tree. But before I begin, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. Now, without further ado, let's ecstatically energize our way on over to the eccentric, energy-inducing quirk that is Wave Motion, or as the dub calls it, Surge. Wave Motion is an emitter type quirk which first appeared in chapter 131 of the My Hero manga and episode 68 of the anime. This quirk grants its user the ability to convert their own vitality and life force into raw energy that they can discharge from the palms of their hands or from their feet as spiraling shock waves. Now these spiraling shock waves kind of work similarly to Katsuki Bakugo's explosions, in that the user of this quirk can determine the strength of the shock waves they produce, but but the stronger the wave created, the more powerful the recoil. Also on the topic of Bakugo, as it turns out, Nejure's combat style is very similar to that of the loud-mounted nuclear bomb of a human being. She can release devastatingly powerful shock waves from her hands as an offensive blast, and she can also use her quirk to propel herself forward, giving her more mobility and using it to add more force and power to her kicks and punches. So I guess you could say that Nejure is the Bakugo of the big tree, which is either an amazing amazing compliment or the biggest insult you have ever heard in your entire life. And I'm pretty sure there are some Nedre fans who will want to end me after making that comment. Hey yo, what the fuck did you say about best girl? Oh crap, they got in! No! But now it's time to talk about this quirk's abilities. Which there are actually quite a few of considering this character's lack of screen time compared to the other big tree members. As I've previously mentioned, for close quarters combat and for increased mobility, Nedre is able to use the recoil from her quirk to propel herself forward at increased speeds, and to increase the power behind her kicks and punches. However, this isn't the only benefit to mobility Nejure gains from this quirk, as we have seen her levitate and even fly by releasing continuous small blasts of energy under her feet, keeping her constantly propelled in the air. And in actuality, Nejure tends to take to the skies quite a lot, whether it's to display her beauty, magnificence and grace in a festival, or to keep her distance from an opponent while she blasts them with her quirk. But this quirk isn't just useful for combat and mobility, it is also great for support purposes, as seen when Nedra used low energy spiraling waves to carry both civilians and vehicles up into the air and safely out of harm's way. It's also very important to note that none of the vehicles or people were physically harmed by this process, meaning that not only can Nedra create non-damaging waves, but the size of the waves produced is not directly correlated to the power output. Basically, bigger waves don't necessarily mean stronger. Now, while it doesn't technically give its user enhanced stamina, wave motion does promote and help to train its user in increasing their stamina level. As the more the user of this quirk uses this quirk, the more used to it and its stamina draining side effect they will become, subsequently increasing their stamina level. Essentially, it's like any physical training. The more you do it, the more accustomed your body becomes to it and the stronger you become. Although I will say that Nejure's stamina seems almost superhuman. After her stamina was siphoned by a trigger enhanced quirk, Nejure was still able to hold her own against the uber powerful quirk wielder for 20 minutes until the trigger drug wore off. So yeah, you do not want to get into a battle of attrition with this badass queen. Also, her increased stamina is starting to make a lot of sense of all those rule turns. Force. As for named super moves, there are currently two that we know of. The first of which is called Gring Wave, or Gringe Wave, or Gringu Wave. Look, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea.
idea how this word is pronounced, or even what it means for that matter. The anime called this move Nedre Wave, which is a total cop-out, and when I searched a word in Google, it gave me this result. And I mean, I hate to say it, but it kind of fits Nedre. Horikoshi was playing 5D chess when he named this technique. But anyway, for this move, Nedre charges her quirk to 30% output strength, and then discharges two powerful waves, one from each of her hands, creating dual long-range giant spiraling blasts. While being only 30% of her full power output, this move was still powerful enough to take down two massive villains with gigantification quirks simultaneously. This really makes you wonder how powerful this quirk is at 100% output. Well, no need to wonder, as for Nedre's second name super move, Nedre Flood, she does just that. For this move, Nedre charges her wave motion quirk to 100% power output, and she twists her hands in a spiral formation and releases a massive blast of energy concentrated in both hands towards her opponent. The name Nedre Flood comes from the fact that Nedre only discharges this attack when she is above her opponent, so that it forms into a downward spiral, looking like a waterfall of energy. Now, it's not exactly clear why she only uses this move above her opponent, but it could be because of wave motion speed, which actually brings us into our next section, quirk weaknesses. And let me tell you, wave motion does have its fair share of them. You see, the waves Nedre discharges actually move relatively slowly, as they have to travel in a spiral rather than a straight line. So instead of going from point A to point B, they have to go from point A to B, C, D, E, F, all the way to Z. This means that if the user is facing off against a speedy opponent or someone a great distance away, they will have serious trouble hitting them. So what does this have to do with Nedre being above her opponent for the Nedre flood attack? Well, it could be that Nedre trying to counteract this speed problem is using the acceleration of gravity to increase her attack speed. By discharging the blast in a downward motion, gravity's acceleration would help the energy waves move faster, giving her opponent less time to react and increasing the likeliness of a successful hit. Now, as of recording, this isn't the official reasoning for this, and there is nothing really to support this idea other than speculation. But it makes more sense to me than she just shoots it downwards like a waterfall to call it Nedure Flood. Another weakness that comes with this quirk is funnily enough, one of its biggest benefits, the recoil. Just like Bakugo's explosions, the more powerful the wave created, the more recoil there will be. If the user is not prepared, not used to, or just uses too much energy, this could prove to be extremely detrimental for the user, possibly resulting in dislocated limbs, broken bones, or in a worst case scenario, the force of the recoil could potentially blow off the user's arms or legs. I mean, Nedre only used 30% of her full power power and still caused her to jolt backward. Now bear in mind, not only has she undergone years of training with this quirk, but she was also prepared for the knockback and it still happened. One wrong move with this power and it's bye bye limbs. But the most devastating weakness of this quirk is the fact that it's powered by the user's own vitality. What this means is, every time the user wants to use this quirk, they have to give up some of their own life and energy to do so. Think of it like a fighting game. Every time you use your special attack, you lose MP. This is essentially how wave motion works, and it's a huge limitation for the quirk, as not only does it mean there's a limited amount of uses you will get out of this ability over a period of time, but it also means that overuse can result in fatigue, hallucinations, and in the worst case scenario, debt. Yes, you heard me right. If you are overtired and you use this quirk, it could end up killing you, as you could be converting the energy needed to keep your organs running and your body alive. In fighting game terms, it would be like if you used your special move without any MP left. So instead, it took your HP. So yeah, the whole vitality and energy costing is a pretty bad weakness. But enough of the weaknesses, now it's time to talk about this quirk's potential. The biggest and most beneficial of which would be if the wielder of this quirk could control the trajectory at which their energy traveled. Being able to
able to shoot in a straight line would increase the speed and efficiency of the quirk, as well as allow the user to make pinpoint precision attacks. Cube or cone-shaped blasts would be great for capturing and restraining opponents, as well as for transporting and protecting nearby allies or civilians. And animal-shaped blasts, like a giant energy butterfly, wouldn't provide many benefits, but they would look really cool, and I'm sure Nedre would absolutely adore this ability. Since we've seen Nedre charge up this quirk by having spirals of energy build up around her arms, there is the potential that Nedre could cover her entire body with these waves, practically making her untouchable and giving her a huge boost defensively. Plus, if she wanted to take this a step further, once wrapped in spiraling energy, she could dive at opponents turning herself into a human missile, or even cooler, she could release all of the built up energy around her outwards, essentially making one giant wave motion energy tornado with her in its center. Now that would be baller. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything you need to know about the quirk wave motion. Overall, it's actually a super powerful powerful quirk with a huge amount of benefits, so it's easy to see why Nedre is one of the top three in UA. Would I like to have this quirk myself? Absolutely. Imagine having the ability to levitate, fly, and take down literal giants with only 30% of your power. Also, I have to point out that Nedre herself really doesn't get that much screen time or time in the spotlight, so what we are seeing and what we know could only be a fraction of her true power. Who knows what other tricks this eccentric beauty has up her sleeves. But let me know what you think. Would you like to have the wave motion quirk? And what quirk would you like me to cover in this series next? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra!